Welcome back, everybody. It is Thanksgiving Monday. It is beautiful and rainy and cozy. And I'm hopping on here because I'm getting some messages about why. So a lot of people wonder why it is that I have this channel. I get a lot of messages and a lot of comments, usually with a lot of skepticism about why it is that I like buses. There are a lot of people who admire rail and city transit and have a different take on the hobby versus mine. I think my take on motor coaches and my MCI MC9 it's rooted in a very different place than just appreciating transportation. I was never a commercial license holder. I started my adult life in a management position within shipping, looking after uh, intermodal um, truck rail vessel operations up here in Canada. And my life was going in a very, very different direction. I was actually looking at moving to the US um, with an ex of mine and I was kind of wrapping up loose ends in Canada and in order to achieve what I wanted to in my personal life and in order to achieve the happiness that I wanted after coming out, I left my management job and I became a school bus driver, which is why I have the back of my school bus in my sleeve. It was a very, very pivotal time in my life to go from making a decent salary to being underpaid and turning 23 years old with a busload of eight-year-olds. Um, what I learned at that time, I was a volunteer firefighter. I was going through a lot of stuff, getting my own life experience. Aside from transportation, I learned the hard way that as a gay man, you mask so much in your adolescence that you almost delay yourself emotionally and in a, an emotional development way. So I started going through life lessons and things in my 20s that most people get to do in high school. And I was going through a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, a lot of turmoil, and driving a school bus was fulfilling and rewarding in a small way, but where I really found a joy was doing the charters because I actually got to see people having a great time, making happy memories, living, uh, a degree of life that I wanted to be able to achieve myself. So I was able to use social media back before I had YouTube, back before I had the Greyhound, and market myself to start opening a few doors in the seated coach world as a younger driver, which wasn't the most common coming up on 10 years ago. And that then made me want to do more and get into the entertainers. And what I was able to do was have the contrast of horrible days and, and bad days and, and stress and things beyond my control and I was able to have those good days and having a positive influence and making people smile and you know I think everyone whether you're 18 and fresh out of high school or you're 68 and going to a however many decade year reunion of high school you all remember good teachers you all remember good bus drivers you also remember the bad ones driving a bus and being that person in someone's day was just the contrast that I needed. I wanted to settle down. I came off the road full time. I became a 911 dispatcher. I was still a volunteer firefighter. I became a fire service instructor. I was immersed in the emergency services. I started working for another um, agency in the county, helping people through hard times. And I was really longing for that joy out of busing. And when COVID hit, it opened my eyes as to how privileged I was, because not only was I getting the emotional reward, it also proved to me that I was being paid and compensated to travel to places that I would never afford as a young person. I was paid to have time off to work on college courses or other programs that I was taking and didn't have to worry about a, a work-life balance because I was able to do my personal life at work between trips. And in COVID, I was starved for that fulfillment. The MCI came up in Winnipeg. That's a whole other video about finding it. I'll put the link down below. And then 
this has been such a journey. You know, I grew up around old cars. I grew up around passenger vehicles, I charter vehicles, livery vehicles. And having this project and people asking me, why don't you convert it to a tiny home? Why don't you convert it to a camper? Why don't you do what everyone else has decided is the only fate for an old bus? It's taught me so much about myself and it's so therapeutic. There have been studies done in the US um, about auto therapy and the impacts with you know, people much more my senior, but the impacts of nostalgia and thinking of simpler times and happier days. And it's all relative to whatever path in life we've lived. But for me, I'm experiencing that. You know, I have my own story as each and every one of us do. But when I get to play with the Greyhound, it's a simpler time. I transcend into a happy place. I get to relive in a similar way. You know, it's a older coach without air conditioning that's functioning and it's a five speed and not an automatic. But I get to relive really happy memories starting out as a charter coach bus driver. During COVID, it was such an outlet. And it's taught me a lot about myself when I'm working to fix something on it because it's old, things break, and I get frustrated and I have to stop and I have to think of a workaround or I need to find a part to fix it. It's taught me patience with myself. It's taught me to have to think outside the box when there's a workaround and there's a specific part that is discontinued or you can't find and you need to come up with another workaround to keep things as accurate and as preserved as possible. It has taught me so much about each and every emotion. I've been frustrated. I've been hurt physically. I have cut myself on that bus. I've had the most joyous moments of success when something works after I've fumbled around with it. And then I get to make a little bit of income when I get to see it captured on the silver screen. And it just captures my efforts and other people get to appreciate it and it serves a purpose and it feels like there is a point to it. And when people throw in my face that doesn't make sense to them, well, it's not to make sense to you. It makes sense to me. Time out. Pause the video after this. One of the biggest supporters of my channel and my endeavors with my MCI MC9 is Capital City Apparel Co. Check out their website. You can buy some of my own merch direct from their website. They'll ship direct to your door. And if you don't want any of my stuff, you can commission them for your own fundraisers, projects, uniforms, anything at all. They have an amazing product with amazing software and endless capabilities. I've put this through the dryer dozens of times. There's no cracking, there's no fading, there's no peeling. Everything looks as fresh as the day it was done. And I cannot thank them enough for a top shelf product. So please head on over to their website, give them some love, please help support the project. And like I say, if you need anything from them at all, check out the website, get them on social media, shoot them a direct message. They will move mountains with a teaspoon for you. And they are one of my biggest supporters and I can't thank them enough for believing in me and helping me get my channels out there so we can keep this bus going down the road and in movies and appreciated. So thanks again. And I have so many things that I wanna do with it and life is so busy and I'm a new dad and I'm going through all these changes in life and I'm trying to find the work-life balance now like we all are all the time with all of these changes. But the bus, while to some it's just a silly greyhound, to me it's a therapy, it's an outlet, it's a purpose, it is something that I can say that I've done and I'm making memories. And I can't describe the feeling that for the first time this year, I actually got it out to some shows and people stepped on. They would step on with you know canes or walkers and I'd give them a hand up the stairs and they would flash back 40 years. I had a gentleman tell me a story about remembering to go visit his daughter in Toronto on the Greyhound and he just he unlocked memories in an instant that he hadn't thought of in decades. Um, even my mother the first time she stepped on it she flashed back to memories of, of the Greyhound and we all know that my bus was never actually a Greyhound. It looks like it, it's reminiscent of it. When you step on most people don't notice that the floor is a different color or the seat upholstery is different or it doesn't have the the service lights and those little things that you get the gist of it and it's just so cool to sit back and let people enjoy it <clears throat> i was at a show this summer and there was a little boy who stepped on and obviously was facing some challenges in life and he was just so enamored by the bus 
he let himself on. He went under my little rope that was blocking the driver's area, like up, up the stairs to the aisle. And his mother apologized profusely. And honestly, it's gone through 40 years of life, 30 of which were hard commercial use. I doubt there was anything that he could do. Then I, would I wouldn't let him hang like a monkey off a seat back or stomp on armrests, but he ran up and down the aisle multiple times. I turned the TVs on. I let him talk on the PA. And it was just so awesome. So for me, the bus is just an all-encompassing relaxation, purpose, outlet. And I could have a Harley Davidson or a boat or get my private pilot's license or do one of the typical guy hobbies, but I wouldn't get the return on investment emotionally the same way because of my professional career and what it affords me mentally. I also wouldn't have the opportunity to put a Harley Davidson or a run of the mill boat into a movie with a day rate and get to be creative, which is what I love about YouTube. So this is just a little cold morning coffee session explaining why. Because everyone asks, and when I say I'm keeping it preserved and I'm keeping it seated and it's not going to be stripped and turned into a tiny home, which 90% of the people never actually see to completion, it's, it's a little time capsule. And I don't know what the future holds for that bus. I have a lot of lofty plans and a lot of lofty goals, but I have a lot bigger priorities and fish to fry right now with my daughter and her future and saving for her education and, and getting through this chapter that I'm in right now. But I have custodianship of the bus right now. I hope to keep it for the rest of my life. It is irreplaceable to me. Um, but I'm not gonna butcher it. I'm not gonna fall in line with the pack of the new age 2023 off-grid living fiascos. Um, I'm very fortunate and it makes me happy and I know it makes a lot of you guys happy and to anyone else who doesn't get it, there's a lot of things that you guys do that I don't understand and I don't ask why. So enjoy your coffee, happy Canadian Thanksgiving and I can't wait to get back behind the wheel of it. It's pretty well stored right now but I have a few more things I wanna do before the snow flies. So I hope to see you soon.